So one reason that Oregon is a trendy upset pick of sorts, and look, it's an 11-6 matchup. The six seeds are not going undefeated. The 11 seeds are not going undefeated. These matchups are three and one at, at worst, oftentimes two and two. I think that the reason is Dana Altman and, and Dana Altman almost alone. And Folly Dante is playing at an insanely high level. At, at both ends of the floor, he impacts the game defensively with his re, he's a great rebounder, his shot blocking, he can test shots. He's done a pretty good job for the most part, staying out of foul troubles. We talked about that's going to be big in this game, but each of the last two times, and there have only been two instances in which Oregon won the Pac-12 tournament, and that was the only way they could make the big dance, Oregon has made the Sweet 16. And both times they lost to the eventual national champion back in 2013, they lost to Louisville, and in 2019, they lost to Virginia. So they did those they, they accomplished those things as a 12 seed both times here they're an 11 i think that history is one of those mythical statistics that you pull out that makes people have a light bulb go on in their head of like oh it has to happen of course i do have oregon going to the sweet 16 maybe i'm biased maybe i'm looking too much into what i just told you but that i think is the biggest reason is dana altman just Rubik's Cubes, man. He just aligns the Rubik's Cubes. Spencer, I'll definitely give you props for the Rubik's Cube uh, reference there with Dana Altman. And, and look, I, I have heard Dana Altman, he is phenomenal in the NCAA tournament. I absolutely give him props for that. I believe he's never lost a first-round game. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. That sounds right. I will double-check that right now. Okay, well, while you double-check that, here's why South Carolina – is going to win this game. So Dana Altman, great coach, probably the more nationally known coach in this matchup. But Lamont Paris for South Carolina, folks, he's the SEC coach of the year in this conference. And there's a reason why he is one of, I believe, just 10 semifinalists at this point for Naismith National Coach of the Year. Lamont Paris is cerebral within the game. He is great at pushing buttons, knowing when to take a player out, when to make a defensive change. South Carolina, by the way, if they have issues keeping Oregon from driving to the basket, which, you know, it sounds like it's more so three-point shots and feed the ball down low. But if Oregon does have success driving, South Carolina will run a 1-3-1 one, one zone at times, and they have been fantastic with that zone defense this year. But they only will pull it out when they feel like they have to. So that's also something to watch in this game. But Lamont Paris has been great this season, and I think that he's become a lot more well-known in men's college basketball because of what he's done with this team, a team that probably does not have that superstar kind of talent, like maybe a Dante for Oregon or in this region, a Dalton Connect for the Tennessee Volunteers. He's done more with less. Another thing I want to look at real quickly, going back to matchups for just a second, Oregon, I believe, has a freshman point guard coming into this game in Jackson mm -hmm. Shellstadt. Jackson Shellstad is going to go up against two fourth or fifth year players at that guard spot that have both been to the tournament before in Taylon Cooper and Michi Johnson. Now, South Carolina is, again, not going to be aggressive. They're not going to try to steal the ball all game long. But I think the veteran presence at that backcourt for South Carolina going against a freshman point guard, I think that that is something that's going to help this matchup tilt South Carolina's way. South Carolina has played against talented freshman guards before with the Kentucky Wildcats. They absolutely owned that matchup. Now, granted, it was back in January, and they also had this at home. This is much different. It's the NCAA tournament. It's neutral court, just mano a mano. Who's going to be the better man for 40 minutes? But I think that that's something that's going to help South Carolina and maybe work to partly negate the advantage they might have down low with and Folly Dante. Last thing I want to say, and I already alluded to it, Oregon has been a trendy upset pick in this game. The Gamecocks were picked dead last in the SEC preseason poll back this past mm. October. Mm. South Carolina wound up doing so good this season. Obviously, they're 16 in the tournament. But going back to conference play, they were fighting for an SEC regular season title with the Tennessee Volunteers the last week of the regular season. So beware of overlooking South Carolina. I know it's been seven years since they've been in the tournament, but the Gamecocks are here to play. And by the way, fun fact, Last time the Final Four was in Arizona, guess what? Frank Martin, the then head coach, and the Gamecocks were in the Final Four. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying they're going to make it all the way. Just saying. 
it could be something magical about Arizona and South Carolina when the Final Four situate there. So I say all that to say this. I got the Gamecocks winning this game. Okay, so uh, just to confirm what, what, what you thought and what is indeed correct, Dana Altman has never lost a first-round NCAA tournament game as Oregon's head coach. In fact, in every postseason tournament he's ever been in, he's always reached at least the second round. His postseason appearances go like this. CBI champion, NIT quarterfinals, Sweet 16, round of 32, round of 32, Elite Eight, Final Four, NIT round two, Sweet 16, no tournament, but Peyton Pritchard certainly would have won at least one game in there because that team was rolling with PP3 at the helm. Now they've got a different number three point guard from Westland. Sweet 16, NIT second round, NIT quarters, and now this season. So that's a pretty strong track record. And why Oregon's a trendy pick, I think this is a go-either-way game. But I like the Ducks here. I, I'm with Vegas, though. I think this is very low scoring. I think it could just barely clip the over, but I won't be surprised if it goes under here. I think like a 70, 65, you know, no one is scoring more than 72 points in this game. Anybody who does is winning. I, I think I think we probably agree on that, right? Yep. Yeah. I, I I think the first team to go over or to hit 75 or above, that that team is winning. I do not see the winner of this game coming out with a, you know, 81-78, you know, just absolute shootout and an explosion of offense. I don't see that happening. I think one team is going to struggle with the other team's defense because both have been really good this year and Oregon is particularly dialed in. I trust Dana Altman and they can just hit a couple threes. Not a lot, not a lot, J just a couple of threes. If Jadrian Tracy can maybe hit one or two threes, if KJ Evans could hit a triple here and there, he's been very streaky from beyond the arc. If Shel Shelstad or Kuznard, one of them needs to hit multiple threes. If that happens, if you get two or three threes from the combination of Tracy and Evans, and you get multiple threes from either Kuznard or Shelstad, I think Oregon's offense will be in a really, really good spot. But I, I'm I'm stoked for this game. I, I know all of you are as well because it's it's March Madness. It's just it it doesn't get any better. There is no better sporting event in the world than March Madness. And I'm you know just happy at some level that Oregon is in the tournament and will have a chance. But like I said earlier, I think the likelihood that they make the Elite Eight is almost the same as them you know losing this first round game. In that it's so reasonable, it's so possible that I'm going to be absolutely dialed in and watching. So I've, I've got Oregon winning. Andrew, I know you've got South Carolina, but uh, any final thoughts? I'll be kind and give you the last word here if you would like it. One last little fun fact going into this game. The magic number is going to be 70. I believe that outside or of one or two times this season, when South Carolina has held their opponent to less than 70 points, they've won. So if you're Oregon, the number you want to hit is 70. If you hit that, then – there's a higher likelihood the Ducks come out on top. But if you don't hit that, then South Carolina likely would be the team going to the round of 32. Andrew Lyon locked on at Gamecocks. I'm Spencer McLaughlin locked on Ducks. Thanks so much for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed this crossover episode. Hope you enjoy the game as well. We'll see you next time. And until then, hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day.